we're only a couple of days away from 2024. And at this point, I don't think I can keep on recommending the M1 MacBook Air as the best value in the Mac lineup. Now, we're at an interesting crossroads because Apple did release the M3 chip for the iMac, the MacBook Pro, and we also have the M3 Pro chip and the M3 Max chip. And if you look at the performance of the M3 Max chip, it literally is off the charts. And it's competing head and head with the M2 Ultra chip that's found in the $6,000 Mac Pro, as well as the $4,000, $3,000 Mac Studio. So just having the power of an M2 Ultra chip in the form factor as a laptop is mind blowing. It really is. So you know who you are. If you're coming from Intel, by all means, get that M3 chip if you can afford it. If you can't afford the M3 chip, go on Apple Refurbished, go to B&H Photo, go to Amazon, and get yourself a really good M2 Mac that's on sale. But at this point, normally I would be able to recommend the M1 MacBook Air as the one, as the one to go to. Yet at this point, we are at a point where Apple is shifting the entire lineup to M3. And I know on the Apple Refurbit site, at least, you're going to have access to the M1s and the M2 Macs out there. But when it comes to the M1 Mac, I don't think it brings enough to the table anymore. And I think in certain workflows, if you're trying to work on an M1 Mac Mini or even an M1 MacBook Pro, you might start slowing down if you really want to push it to its limit. And if you're a professional watching this video, you don't need me to tell you which chip and which laptop or which Mac to purchase. You know who you are. But I'm going to say my general advice out there is even if you can get a brand new M1 MacBook Air for $750, I think after being out there for three years at this point, I think at this point it's really going to limit you. And if you really want to have any chance of a future with any laptop or any Mac that you want to purchase in the coming 2024, you should only look at the M2 chip and if possible, maybe get the M3 chip. And if you're still stuck on Intel and you're looking to upgrade, get the M3, skip the M2 and the M1, because you know that's a large investment of money. And if you wanna make it really last, the M3 chip is an awesome chip, right? The graphics cores are beautiful because it has ray tracing. It's 20% better in GPU. So if you're doing any type of really hardcore rendering in say uh, Blender, for instance, you definitely want the graphical power of the M3 chip inside of your system. So as I said, if you're a professional, you don't need me to tell you anything. You already know what you need. And I'm just going to say, get the M3 if you're coming from Intel, by all means. But even if you're a consumer at this point, even if you're someone who doesn't really push their system and just want a secondary system to pay bills, to watch YouTube, or any of those things, I'm going to point you towards the M1 or the M2 refurbished site and not so much the M1 refurbished anymore because even though the M1 MacBook Air for my needs works out because I have one terabyte of storage and I have 16 gigs of RAM so I did spend out more money to upgrade my MacBook Air because I knew that I wanted it to last at least five to seven years for my workflow and as I said YouTube is a hobby I'm not looking to get monetized I'm not looking to get a hundred thousand subscribers this is a hobby this is me talking to you just give you my opinions and we can do a back and forth in the comments. That's fine. So for me, this M1 MacBook Air works. And as I said, if your M1 chip works for you in your current Mac, save the money. Go on a trip, right? Take your girlfriend out for dinner or whatever. Save the money. So I'm just going to say that's my big thing about it. I can no longer recommend the M1 series because it is starting to slow down. And even when I do an export of my videos, I'm waiting a long time for it to export from Final Cut. So that's the only thing I need. Don't think that you need the latest and greatest. And I think all of us out here, people who watch my videos, I don't think we're all very, we're that rich. We're not YouTubers. We don't have the budget to buy the newest machine every time it comes out. So that's just my thing. The M1 MacBook Air is the best computer I have ever owned. And it's going to be a really hard challenge and sell to make me say that even when I do upgrade, say, at M4 or M5, it's really going to be a hard sell to tell me that this M1 MacBook Air is not the best. This is the best right here for me and my workflow. But I can't recommend it to anyone else anymore because, as I said, the chip is showing its age. Even on export times, of my, uh, when I export from Final Cut, it takes a while. And I don't like having to wait, but it takes a while. 
but this is not my job. YouTube is not my job. <laughs> so if you're a creative professional, if you're chewing through a lot of photos, like if you're a wedding photographer, or if you're doing any type of 3D graphics, screw everything, get the M3. Either get the M3 Max or the M3 Pro. I'm going to say stay away from the base model M3 because it's just four efficiency cores and four high performance cores. And as you know that when we start shilling out the extra money for the higher end chips, you're really paying for the performance cores. And in the case of the M3 Max chips, what you're really paying for are the graphics cores. So that's just my thing. You know, it's, it's kind of, it makes me feel a little bit sad for not being able to recommend the M1 anymore because it's such a great machine. But, um, and I'm going to even say that, like, even if you do it just for taxes or web browsing, find something refurbished like an M2, like an M2 Mac Mini or, say, uh, M2 MacBook Air. Go for it. But, yeah, even the design feels a little bit dated because I only have two Thunderbolt ports and I don't have MagSafe on that computer. So it's, it's, it is showing its age. And I'm just going to say get the M2. Get the M2 or later. And the best thing I could advise is say maybe get an M2 chip with at least 512 gigabytes of storage and with at least 16 gigabytes of RAM. That's what's going to allow you to keep your MacBook for a couple of years and being able to use it comfortably. Because as we know, the base model M2 systems with 256 gigabytes of SSD, the SSD and the flash memory inside of the M2 Max is just slow, and it's going to slow you down. That's why the minimum spec for anyone buying a Mac this year or going forward, 512 gigs of storage to mitigate that slowness of the SSD, and 16 gigs of RAM to keep you comfortable going into the future. All right, that's about it. Peace.